Yo, what's up guys? My name is Mr. Freeze 2244 and welcome to the Serie 6. And in this video, I'll be covering all six targets, Silent Assassin as usual, and it'll be multiple methods. So it'll be using default loadout and optimized routes as well. All the timestamps are going to be in the description. I think overall there's 11 methods in this video for the six targets. So strap yourself in, enjoy, and uh, let's get into it. The agency has been contracted to eliminate six individuals guilty of committing brutal war crimes during the siege of Sarajevo. As private military contractors for the Cicada Corporation, they are linked with mass killings of civilians, particularly the massacres at Markel and the extended sniper campaign. The notorious Sarajevo Six have managed to avoid the International Criminal Tribunal since the mid-1990s. Our client would now like an alternative fate to catch up with them. Opportunities for elimination will appear over the coming year in multiple locations across the globe. Your first target is Scott Sarno, Director of European Operations for Cicada. Sarno is rarely without a full military backup, so his attendance at the Sanguine Fashion Show will provide multiple opportunities to eliminate the target in a lower than normal security setting. Our client will provide full intelligence on the first target, March 11th. The agency will notify you as soon as the exact location of the remaining targets is ascertained. These targets are lethal, observant, and highly trained, but nothing you can't handle. Good luck, 47. So the first target is going to be the director. It takes place in Paris, and we're going to start off with the default loadout. And then following this, we're going to be showing you the optimized route for this as well. And also I'm going to be showcasing the Trinity Pack suits, so it'll be the white suit, the red suit, and the black suit throughout this entire video, so give you a bit more sense of what these suits look like to help you make a decision whether you want to purchase the Trinity Pack or not. So for the default loadout method of the RIP Director, this one does involve a lot of waiting around, but could, but it was just so easy, I could not avoid putting it out there. So even though it might be a little bit of a boring method, it is going to be super easy for you to beat this elusive target. Well, it's not a elusive target, is it? I get the sense of it is, but it's, uh, it's a Sari over 6 target. He's, you're going to be able to beat him really, really easy. So as we head into the uh, the basement right here, I'll grab that crowbar. I'll grab the key as well. I don't necessarily need to do that. I also don't necessarily need to shoot out the evidence right here, but I do it anyway. It's one of those things that I always tend to do when I'm downstairs in the basement of Paris. Once you're in this section here, we're going to climb all of the steps to the top. At the top, there's going to be a person who's a tech crew. What you want to do is go ahead and knock him out with a crowbar. And it's a bit of a long journey, but you're going to have to drag him all the way down to the bottom of the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs is going to be a closet just outside the kitchen, and you're going to put him, his body in there. The reason for doing that is, well, we don't necessarily need to hide the body all the way down the bottom, but we have some time to kill, so I thought I may, may as well just... Uh, take care of this anyway. We're going to put the tech crew disguise on afterwards. That's going to allow us to remove the enforcer status from the target and his bodyguard that's going to be following up. So he spawns in the attic, if, you, if you're wondering, and he's surrounded by guards. So even if you had a bodyguard disguise, they are all majorly, mainly uh, enforcers. So it's not ideal to take him out there, and it's a little bit inconsistent because he keeps spawning in different spots, so it's not something that... Uh, I really wanted to deal with so i came up with this really easy method anyway so after around about the three and a half minute mark he tends to come downstairs and he will pass through this section so what's going to happen is after you know i said after three minutes or so he will walk down these stairs and it's going to allow us an opportunity to take him out so i'm going to skip that point to save you waiting through the video uh because you've got to wait through the game anyway so i'm going to skip to that point so we actually took longer than expected so i must have miscalculated the time but anyway he will walk through the section with his bodyguard. No, neither of them are enforcers. So we're going to let the target walk past first, close the door behind him, bump into this guard, slow him down a little bit, just let the target get ahead. Then we're going to knock out the bodyguard and then drop the chandelier on the target's head once he reaches the bottom of the stairs. Now, you don't have to do all that necessarily. You could just knock out the guard right in front of the target, 
and then take out the target by just using your weapon or whatever. So it's up to you, it's up to you anyway, because I'm not hiding the bodies. I can't be bothered. Not necessary, because no one passes through that section anyway. So once you've taken out your target, we can now head to an exit, and it's a silent assassin for the first level. And that is uh, default loadout. Again, it's really easy, but it's just... You can argue it's a little bit boring because of the, the fact that you just got to wait around for like two minutes or so. Not a lot happens, but it is an incredibly easy, incredibly simple way of getting a silent assassin for uh, the director. So if you were struggling, there we go. Let's get a confirmation of that silent assassin and then we can move on to the optimized route of actually taking out this target. So this is going to be evolving, you know, better equipment and utilizing all the start locations etc it's going to be the same throughout all the targets as well so i'll just show you show you the silent assassin screen and then we can move on so we're going to start in the attic for this one i'm going to bring along a seeker one i'm going to bring along a fireball and a coin seeker one is all you're going to really need really we're going to start in the attic because that is where the target spawns run past this door Crouch behind these tables because there's two guys to your left. Vault over this table in front of you. We're going to stay crouched throughout this in the entire process. Make your way through the various obstacles. Take out the seeker. Once you reach this point, you want to sort of aim. I don't know. I can't really tell you how to aim that seeker around. It's one of those things where you just got to practice. But uh, it shouldn't be from that distance. It shouldn't be difficult to hit your shot there with Scott Sarno. So make sure you take him out uh, with this with a the seeker there. That's going to make him, you know, nauseous. And he's going to head to the bathroom. And there's a bathroom just over here, which is Dalia Muggle. This is a bathroom, so that's very convenient for us. So what we're going to do is shimmy along this ledge. Keep in mind, as soon as you climb into this bathroom, they're both enforcers, so be wary of that. There's a mirror right there, so stay crouched. Now, for some reason, it's uh, it's blackened out. I don't know why. But we're going to knock out the guard now and then go ahead and drown the targets. Don't necessarily have to drown the target. You can just, again, I don't know, snap his neck if you want to or throw him over the balcony. Whatever you like. We are going to hide this body, though. The money has been wired to your account. Because what I'm going to do is take his disguise. That's going to allow us to get more of an easier access to the exit over there. That's what I'm going to do. So I exit the bathroom, head over the back here, jump over the balcony, slide down the pipe, and then head to the helicopter for an easy silent assassin for the director. Like I said, he, he, as long as you've got that seeker and you've got the attic start location, it's really easy. I think the most trickiest part is actually hitting that shot. But for, for me, it's easy, but it's one of those things where I can't really teach you how to hit those shots. It's sort of just like you just sort of know how much. Uh, Oh, you've got to give it. So there we go. Saw assassin for uh, the director again. There's two methods for him. It's going to be the same throughout all the targets. Apart from the extractor, we're only going to use one uh, one uh, method for the extractor because it's all that's needed. Trust me, you wait until you see it. Welcome back, 47. I trust you found your time in Paris successful. The agency has located your second target in the Italian coastal town of Sapienza. We have learned that Gary Lunn, formerly known as the Enforcer for the Sarajevo 6, is working at the Ether Corporation Biolab, supervising high-level security. This is an exclusive holiday destination, 47, and the agency would discourage a public elimination. Although the target was part of the same Cicada paramilitary unit as Scott Sarno, there is no indication that he has learned of his colleague's death. Lunn is likely to be found in the luxurious Villa Caruso or the Ether Biolab. You should expect access to these areas to be restricted and the laboratory security to be particularly heavy. I'll leave you to prepare. Good luck.
Our next stop is going to be in Sapienza for the Enforcer. He's going to be our second target for the Sarajevo 6. Again, we're using the default loadout for the first method. And we'll use the optimized one straight after this. So, from the main square, what we're going to need to do is head up to this building. This building over here. We need to get ourselves a disguise, which is what I usually go to is the kitchen staff disguise. So that's where we're going to go ahead. So, go through 47's apartment. Go around the back. Climb up onto this balcony into the room. It's going to be Rocco's bedroom. Go ahead and put his kitchen staff disguise on. Or kitchen assistant. Once you've done that, we can drop down here. Drop down the other wall. Pass through the kitchen. It's not going to be any forces with this disguise on. It's a pretty good disguise for this map. Especially around the mansion area anyway, at least. Let's take out a pistol at this point and shoot out this camera. Not completely necessary. We are going to take out the evidence a little bit later on anyway. So don't worry if you do get spotted by it. But we are going to need to get our key card from this room here. Let's go ahead and grab that. Gary Lunn is going to be uh, in the laboratory area. That's where we're going to. Into the caves. Swap your key card on the door. Goes into the caves. And there's going to be another guard that we need to take out as well. Because we're now in a hostile area, so this disguise has to go. So with this guard's back to you, go ahead and subdue him. And then put him in the nearby crate. Might not be exactly in this position for you, but just make sure he has it back to you before you subdue him, of course. Put his disguise on. And drop down this ledge right here. If you want to know how I did that, you just aim, move forward, and press the drop button at the same time. Once you've done, you've got. Once you've gone down to the the, uh, the side, what we're going to do is grab that wrench, go inside the building, and then knock out this guard and put him in the crate. And then we're going to destroy the evidence. By the way, don't worry if you can't do that drop down thing. Just climb down the pipe as usual if you can't do it. Don't worry about it. But now we're taking out the cameras. What we're going to do is set a distraction for our targets. He'll be wandering around the laboratory area. So what we're going to do is make sure we get. Gary in this position where he's going to be about to be. So take out your coin. We want to make sure that the target is the closest one to you compared to all the other NPCs. So look on your mini map, use it to your advantage, make sure that he is the closest person to this distraction. Because if he's not, someone else is going to go in to investigate that coin. That's not what we want. So make sure that he is the closest person to that distraction and then throw it as far as you can to make sure that you can hear it and only he can hear it. He'll come over to investigate. All we gotta do is just shoot him in the head the and take your exit your immediately head. via the plane. Nice easy to assassin. The default loadout stuff. Cool. I thought it was quite simple that was. I think in my original guide I ended up knocking a lot of people out in the break room. But I tried to do that again but it was inconsistent. So with the optimized guide, I decided to start undercover in the lab already. Bring along a seeker one, fiber wire, and coin. Welcome to From the start, we're going to exit the blend spot, the head on out using your keycard. Follow the path I'm taking. I'm doing this to avoid the cameras. Good luck. So avoid the camera grids that are on the floor. Huh. However, you can take out the cameras if you really do want to, if you do get spotted. It's not a big deal. So with your secret in hand, just go ahead and shoot Gary from wherever he is. As long as you don't get spotted shooting it. Use every piece of cover to your advantage. But no matter where he is, he is going to head on over to this um, portable toilet over here. So meanwhile, he's heading over there. What we're going to do is grab that wrench, head on inside this room, knock out this guard, hide his body, and then take out the evidence. Target can take a while for him to come over here, but he eventually does. Praise be the Seeker 1. We didn't have this in Season 1, so... Things were a lot more difficult back then. We didn't have much tools to play with, really.
So from this point, you can go ahead and subdue him and just snap his neck if you want to, or you can just drown him. Whatever, it's up to you. Or you could bring along this range if you want to do this a little bit faster. Either way, once you've taken him out, you're going to head straight to the exit over here, which is just the plane exit. And we're done. Again, nice easy silent assassin. No drama so far. So again, I'm going to show you the silent assassin screen. And then we can move on to the next target, which takes place in Marrakesh. I have the third Sarajevo 6 profile online now. Your target is Walter Menard, presently located in the North African city of Marrakesh. He's a veteran of the paramilitary Sigma unit, active during the Yugoslav War of the 90s. Interestingly, our research has uncovered a series of disappearances and massacres in the area where Sigma was operating. This may have some bearing on the contract, but we do not have full details at present. Your target has been tasked with handling the evacuation of rogue banker Klaus Hugo Strandberg. We believe Strandberg is currently attached as an advisor to General Zaydan in Marrakesh. With protesters in the streets and the city on the brink of a military coup, you should have cover to operate relatively freely. I leave you to prepare. Good luck. Our third target is the Extractor in Marrakesh. We're going to bring along the default loadout for this one and start the Bazaar Entrance. There's no Optimized Guard for this one, purely because this is the Optimized Guard, so there's no point in me making a second one, because it's completely unnecessary. From the very start, we're going to grab this wrench. Make sure you're skipping that camera opening, panning cutscene thing at the start, so skip that immediately, just so you're in sync with my timing. Once you're on the roof hop here, make sure you knock out uh, that head teacher right there. Take out your gun before you jump up on the railing. Or on the, the ledger of this building right here. And you'll see your target just about to sit down right there. Aim your gun, shoot him in the head, and it's just as simple as that. His body doesn't get found. Just make sure you get to the exit pretty sharpish. You might think that's, that shot is a little bit tricky. It's, it's not. It's not as bad as it looks. And you don't have to perfectly time it like that either. Either You can just make sure that you get a nice little angle. Or alternatively, you can slide down the pipe if you want to and create yourself the angle down the bottom. And then you can shoot him through the window that way. It's up to you. But I thought that was really easy, really simple. And it didn't feel necessary to make another method for this one. So there's only method, one method for Marrakesh. The extractor, elusive target. I keep calling them elusive targets. They're not elusive targets, are they? Sarajevo 6 targets. So as usual, I'm going to show you the Silent Assassin screen, and then we can move on to our fourth target. Good afternoon, 47. Welcome to Bangkok. I have the fourth profile available now. Your target is John Stubbs, a retired mercenary and former member of Sigma. He is on holiday in Bangkok with his wife, but our background information indicates she is unaware of his past. The contract stipulates no actions with regard to her, so proceed at your discretion. This target is no longer active, having retired with a substantial fortune in offshore bank accounts. Our intelligence has been unable to turn up the source of this wealth, only that it is substantial enough to provide the target with a life of luxury. Hotel records indicate they will remain here for at least a week. One other VIP is in residence, so expect a heightened security presence. I'll leave you to prepare.
Our fourth target is the Veteran. It takes place in Bangkok. And for the default loadout, I'm not completely a, a, a fan of this one at all. Purely because he spawns in different spots, so it makes the the, uh, the method in hand a little bit tricky. He's always walking around the open, so you can't isolate him. So it's one of those things where you really are limited for options. So I'm going to give you a, my advice as best as I possibly can throughout this. So try and follow it as best as you can. We come through this basin right here and take out that camera. What we need to do is get ourselves a disguise. So we're going to get a hotel security disguise. Doing that, we're going to climb these stairs. Take out our coin. Open this door. Chuck the coin in that direction there and grab this hammer. We're going to hide behind this, uh, this shelf right here. The guard's going to come in to investigate the noise. We're going to knock him out. Hide his body, take his disguise, you know the drill. Collect the coin and the gun, and then drag his body, put him in the closet, take his disguise. Once you exit the room, make sure you take a left rather than taking a right. We're going to avoid the camera. If you turn right, you're probably most likely going to get spotted by that camera, so to avoid it completely, just go left and run around. Next step is to get ourselves a propane flask. And yes, it may seem well, like... Um, one of those things that's it's almost like a last resort kind of thing and it is there's not really much this target you can do with him you can manipulate him maybe to stand in front of a chandelier or something like that but he's been followed very closely by his wife so it's one of those things that are a little bit tricky you need to be watching out for the hotel manager as well she's a, a super enforcer to all disguises so our target could be wandering around anywhere outside but eventually he will come over to this section over here on the left where i'm about to approach now to have a phone call it just it'd be a little bit convenient for me at the moment that he just goes there straight away but he might be wandering all around the place but he does eventually come over here for a phone call so you might need to be a little bit patient for this so with propane flask in hand throw the propane flask in front of him right there i'm going to use this cover to our advantage and then shoot it once you've done that, you should have your Assault Assassin Tracker staying green. And if that is the case for you, then you can head straight to the exit. Just be wary of all the people panicking around you. You might have some guards that turn into enforcers, but just try and avoid them as best as you can. And then head to an exit. But there we go. It's a Assault Assassin for a default loadout for the veteran, but he is probably the worst target out of all of them, to be honest. Aside from maybe the controller, he's a bit of he's a bit of a boring target to be honest. There is our son assassin. You might get the call interrupted challenge completed as well, which is if you take him out while he's in the middle of a phone call, that completes the challenge. For the optimized route though, we are going to bring along the briefcase and store the remote emetic gas device inside it. So we're bringing Welcome this method back. Bangkok, this makes things target. really and easy. So from the very start, take the gas device out of the briefcase and then conceal it back into the briefcase. That will arm the device. So in your inventory now, you should have a remote. So go ahead and take that remote out. And as your target walks past you, just go ahead and activate it. And that's going to send him to the bathroom. So again, this is really easy. Now we have this, this sort of equipment. We didn't have this sort of equipment in Season 1 didn't even have a briefcase in season one so this is why it made it so difficult and limited your options for season one um but we did have the option for using uh, fire extinguishers rather than just propane flasks so fire extinguishers were lethal in season one believe sure. it or not until they changed it and decided not to make that lethal anymore in, for season two but yeah this is a super easy method once you've got this uh, gas device in a briefcase he's going to head on into the bathroom he's still closely being followed by his wife so we are going to have to knock her out so i would recommend bringing along i don't know maybe a, a sedative syringe or a calmer one so you can quickly take her out without hiding a body because i do know people coming into this bathroom so you just need to keep that in mind keep an eye on your mini map as you're doing all this stuff because timing may be maybe a little bit different for you guys 
So if you used a camera on this this woman right here, you wouldn't need to hide the bodies at all. Because you've done a drowning kill, which is an accident kill, on your target, and you've taken her out with the camera, which again doesn't negate your silent assassin. But once you've taken care of all that anyway, it's an easy silent assassin for the veteran in Bangkok. But he's easily one of the most boring targets there is because he's again he's walking around outside. It, this this suffers from the same problem that a freelancer has on Bangkok. You have targets wandering around this outside area, and there's just really no way to isolate them without these medic devices. Unfortunately. So there we go. Sight assassin for the veteran. It's an easy one. This next one's probably what most people have been waiting for, but I assure you, I think it's his name of the mercenary, he's not as bad as you might think he is. It's all about trying to understand the mechanics of the AI of the bodyguards that he has with him. So let's move on to that one. Good afternoon, 47. I have the next profile available. Your target is Patrick Morgan, codenamed The Mercenary. He is a former member of the Cicada Deniable Operations Unit Sigma and is an expert in a wide range of combat techniques. His last known operation for Sigma was almost 12 months ago. ICA files indicate that the target met with international environmental terrorist Sean Rose in Luxembourg last winter. It is highly likely that he has been recruited by the militia. We have pinpointed a training facility used by the militia in Colorado and intercepts make it very probable the target is located there. The camp is well sighted and defended and your target is a lethal combatant who expects the worst following the mysterious deaths of four of his old unit. Take care, 47. I'll leave you to prepare. The fifth target, the mercenary, is all about really manipulating the stalker AI that the bodyguards have of our target and trying to isolate the target, manipulating that. I'm going to show you how to do it in this one. This is the default loadout. I'm going to show you an optimized one after this, but it's not as hard as you might think it is. So from the very start, what we are going to need to do is get ourselves a disguise. So first and foremost, climb through this little section here, take out your coin, throw it behind this tractor, retrieve the coin. That's going to distract one of these guards over here. Usually I'll turn off that generator over there and drag the body and put it in the crate, but that takes a little bit, a bit long and we need to make sure we do this relatively quickly. We don't want to lose our opportunity. So knock out the guard from cover. Drag him a little bit further into the uh, the grass. Put his disguise on and take his weapon. From this point, we're going to go all over, over here towards the barn. Once you've climbed through the barn, we're going to drop the weapon. We don't need that. Get that out of the way. We're in a trespassing zone, so just keep that in mind. Passing all the way through this section, climbing through this window. That takes us out of the trespassing zone. So what we're going to do is head on into this little uh, little shed area. This is where everything's going to take place. Grab the propane flask and knock out these two guards in here. Then hide both bodies in the locker. When you're in a certain distance between you and the target, the target will sort of walk towards you. And once you're even closer, the guards will just lock onto you and start coming towards you. And sort of like a, a pack together. So there's four of them overall. So we're going to throw that propane flash next to that door. And as I said, the target sort of knows where you are. He has this sort of super AI as well. So at the moment, the guards have locked onto me, which is not what we really want. But we are going to create a little bit of a gap between him and uh, the guards using this little trick. So we're going to wait for that guard to go away. So our target will come towards you and the guards are going to follow him. That's exactly what we want. This is going to happen if you just persist with it. I'm going to shoot that propane flask once. As soon as he comes through the door, don't let any of the guards enter the room before, uh, I mean, after he comes in because it's going to be a little bit tricky to take him out without taking out the other guards. 
we just shot that camera there to head out on our way out exit. You can take any exit you like, as long as you don't get spotted by any enforcers. But again, I do not recommend using a default loadout for this target anyway, because overall, it's just making things a lot more difficult for yourself. So I would recommend, uh, I would recommend use my second method honestly, because it's a lot more easier overall. Doing this with a default loadout though, got a lot of respect for you if you want to try it, but. I said overall, I think you're better off using equipment. Use them to your advantage if you're going to take this on. Because method 2 is ridiculously easy. But that's how I did it anyway for method 1. For a silent assassin. Hopefully you understood my explanations. I tried to explain the best as I could. Method two, we're going to start undercover at the garage as a militia technician. Bring along a breaching charge. That is all we're going to need. Welcome the old ones are the best. So I, can confirm that the target is I used, I did this back in 2016 as well for the same sort of method. So we're going to head into the shed right here. Grab the propane flask. We're going to manipulate these guards again using this uh, this trailer right here. So we're going to circle around the trailer just just to create a gap between the guards and the target. When you're right next to him, go into your inventory, hover over the breaching charge, drop it out of your inventory, then immediately activate it once you've run away, and that's going to blow up the propane flask, and that's going to take out the target for an accident kill. So it's an accident explosion. So what we did there at the start was basically create a gap between the guards and the target themselves. Give us an opportunity to do that, what we just did. Really, really easy. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a method I used way back in 2016. Super easy. The old old methods are the best. No problem. Super easy. So there we go. Silent Assassin for the Mercenary. Wasn't all that difficult, was it? Good evening, 47. I have the final profile available now. Your target is Tahiji Koyama, codenamed the Controller. He is the final living member of the Sigma paramilitary, and with his elimination, a particularly nasty chapter of recent history will be brought to a close. Hospital records indicate the target suffers a rare genetic disease, but also that he has refused two full bone marrow donations on ethical grounds so far. Interesting. Clients at this particular hospital are not usually picky about where their life-extending therapy comes from. While I have confirmed that he has learned of the deaths of the other members of Sigma, he does not seem to have altered his security arrangements or movement patterns in any meaningful way. Regardless, the hospital is highly secure and it will be difficult to move freely. So I'll leave you to prepare. Our final target is the controller. He takes place in Hokkaido. And for this one, I'm not going to be doing a default loadout method. I'll be doing a method that involves using no equipment at all. And I'll be doing a separate method for the optimized loadout. The reason why I'm doing it with no equipment for the first method, though, is because there's going to be a large portion of people out there that haven't got some actually level 20 on Hokkaido, which allows you to bring equipment onto the maps. So the first method is going to be using no equipment at all. And it doesn't really differentiate much even if you did have equipment for the default Hokkaido. loadout anyway. So from the very start for method one, we're going to head into 47's uh, bathroom and grab the pair of scissors that are laying on the shelf. Once you've grabbed those, we're going to use these as a, a distraction. So in the meantime, we are going to head up the stairs and head on into the bathroom upstairs. It's going to be a VIP patient in there. Go ahead and knock him out. Once you've done that, we're going to drag his body into this cubicle and hide him in the closet. From this point, we have to wait for the director to come up the stairs. He is currently downstairs uh, talking to Yuki Yamazaki. She's the main target from the, the main campaign. So he, 
he is there. He's going to be making his way up the ramp momentarily. And we're going to use these pair, this pair of scissors to distract him. The reason why we put this disguise on is because we are going to need to use this disguise to get into the, the room where the Sigma operations files are, which is one of your objectives. Once he reaches the top of the ramp, we're going to open the door now and throw the pair of scissors in the bathroom to distract him. Once he comes on over into the bathroom, close the door behind him and subdue him. Wrap the pair of scissors and then drag his body and put him in the closet, just like you did with the other guy. Only this time before you leave, put the director's disguise on. Next step is to head to the director's office. That is where the Sigma files are. So you should have no problems getting through there. I think there's only one enforcer in our path on the way there. So just follow where I'm going. Head on up the ramp. First door on your right. Up one floor. Take a left. And there's going to be one enforcer here to your left and one and one non-enforcer on your right. So you should be able to bypass this section with those two guards in that position. However, the enforcer, though, is going to basically standing straight facing the door, which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to skip to the point where he actually walks away because it can take a while. Once he starts walking away, just give him a chance to actually turn around before you move on. Now we're going to go get ourselves a wrench. I'm going to do that so we can create a little bit of a privacy area for us and the target. So go all the way down the walk to the bottom of the stairs into the morgue. Pass through the security room. And you'll be in the loading bay out here. So follow the path I'm going because there's going to be an enforcer in this area. Grab the wrench from the table. Then take the stairs up. And work your way around so what we're going to do is use this to turn on the hot water that's going to allow it's going to make everyone to you know go back inside you don't have to overheat the uh, the sauna though but you do have to use the wrench on this one no, I'll pass. Maybe later. so it's going to make the water too hot so everyone's going to go inside it's going to allow you a bit of private time between you and the target So once everyone disappears, you can listen to what the uh, target has to say. I'm not going to. But you can do that in game if you'd like. He'll even follow you after as well, once he's finished talking. So I'm going to close the door behind me right here. And we're going to take her out. Just make sure you hide the body afterwards though. I'm going to dump him down here. Keep in mind you get to a challenge called No Thanks Captain Exposition uh, popping up for you if you took him out before he finished his speech. That's how you complete that redacted challenge. But we're going to exit right here and it's an easy sort assassin for the controller, our final target. So I'll let you see this sort assassin screen and then we can show you the optimised route for this. easy so for this one i'm going to start in the morgue and i'm going to bring along a lethal syringe and the electronic key hacker alternatively you can bring along a scrambler whichever one you may have from the start we're going to let this camera pan across because this uh this morgue doctor here he's in the wrong position for us to exit the blend spot welcome to hokkaido so we're going to wait for him to have his back to us i have received a priority update and as soon as he does we're going to exit the blend spot Make our way around the morgue area in a clockwise fashion. Head on into the security room, stay crouched. Subdue the guard in the security room. Hide his body and take his disguise. Now 
You don't have to take out the cameras if you don't want to, it's not necessary. I hate when that happens. I'm trying to exit the door and you just end up uh, hiding in the spots. Never mind. Head on all the way up the stairs now. To the second floor. Make sure these two guards are facing the other way before you use the key hacker on the door. Get into the director's office and then download the files. This is going to be a trespassing zone, so make sure these two guards don't see you inside here. Once we've done that, once we've got the files, we're going to head all the way back down the stairs, back to where we came from, in the mortuary. And just like we did for the first method, we're going to need to acquire ourselves a, a wrench. So it clears the area for us and the targets. So go ahead and grab that wrench. Just on the table here. Head on all the way up the stairs and circle your way around. So just like we did in the method one, we're going to overheat the water. So once enough people have exited or everyone's got their back to you, you can go ahead and use your syringe on the target anytime you like. Alternatively, you can listen to what he's got to say, and then he'll follow you anywhere you want to. You can lead him into a bathroom if you want and take him out there. It's entirely up to you. Be, be, keep in mind that the conversation is quite a long one. But once we've taken him out, we're going to head to the exit right here, and that will conclude complete all six of the elusive um the i almost called it elusive targets again the sarajevo six so this has been a definitive guide for all six targets so hopefully this has helped you out if it has make sure you drop a like but that's it for me that's it for the video so thank you very much for watching drop a like on the video if it helped you out subscribe if you want to do the channel Click the bell icon and select all notifications to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below or clicking the link in the description for all the details of that. And a big shout out to my Psycho Assassin members as well, which includes Agent 47, Paul Walker, Kyle Moon, Wandering Wendy, Constantine Mueller, Paul at Home and Tobias Reaper. Thank you very much for all your support. I really do appreciate it. It's been a long time now since you've been a Psycho Assassin members as well. So again, I appreciate the long-term support. It really means a lot to me. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.